all this. I hope all of that recorded. <laughs> Connection has time. Oh, please try again. Oh boy. Let's see where we are. Okay, it says that for the last. Okay, it's so it all worked. Pardon me. All right, cool. So actually, I'm going to change that. We're going to restart. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's start that over. My name is Ari Hale, and I am studying for my Anaplan Model Builder Level One certification. And part, I'm on course two, so I passed exam one. I'm on course two, and we're learning how to uh, create process maps. And so for this customer, for the assignment, they need a territory and quota implementation done in Anaplan. And um, I have to create a process map for it. So I prefer to use Lucidchart for process maps. That's what you see now. That's the tool that I'm in. I'm going to create a folder and we'll call it Anaplan. It's really helpful to keep everything just nice and organized. And then let's see if it'll let me create another folder in there. Yes, okay. So we will say, uh, I like to do customer, uh, so this is a customer and we'll just say, uh, I don't know, customer one, territory and quota. So all of this stuff for this customer will go within that folder. So all my Anaplan work, I have a main folder for that. And then all my assignments or customer work will go within that Anaplan folder to keep things organized. And then we'll create a new Lucid chart blank. So first things first, I'm going to label it. So we'll say customer, territory, and quota. Process map V1. And then I'll give it a title up here. So basically we're just dragging and dropping shapes. That is all this is. It doesn't have to be intimidating. Literally we're just dragging and dropping um, shapes and letters and then we're going to ask that we're going to ask the client questions so that we can map the process. What I love about this type of work is that you don't have to create the process. Um, you can ask questions and ask what are you guys currently doing? What's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? So it doesn't have to be intimidating. We're just looking for information. So we'll see. Created May 12, 2022, my initials, and then last updated. All right, cool. So I'm just going to change the font there. This is my preferred font. Okay, so in the course, there are prompts. So I guess I'll keep that open here. Uh, there are prompts and there isn't really step-by-step -step directions for this outside of like how the process works. They're not for creating a process map. And I like that because you kind of have to do it and just figure it out, um, which I think is one of the best ways to learn. Uh, I also prefer to see something and then do it, but this helps to get the brain going. So we click on the questions and then we're mapping the process end to end. So uh, what system do you currently use for your T and Q process? So we use Excel. We have models for each of the, of the sales regions. And then we have another model that consolidates all of the data. Okay, so we have Excel and then we have regions, right? So Excel, the data from Excel goes into the different regions. And then there's another tool that takes all of that information and consolidates it into one place. So when we're looking at the shapes for our flow chart, we have a process, we have a decision, a terminator, so the end of something, a predefined process, a document, database, 
data, prep, manual input, multiple documents, hard disk, so on, internal storage, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we use Excel. So for now, since we don't have super defined details on like Excel, we'd want to ask better questions. But for now, I'm assuming this is a manual process. Oops, wrong thing. That's what manual input. So we say we have data in Excel. Or actually, you know what? We'll take the database icons that we have. T and Q data in. Excel, and then some way, somehow, that data goes into models for the sales regions, right? So we say input TQ data or transfer data to TQ models. And then once we have that, once we transfer there, it gets stored. So where's our little storage icon? Internal storage, okay. So we have models for sales regions, I believe, correct? Yes, models for sales regions. Those are sales regions, models. And I haven't looked ahead to see <laughs> like what the what it wants uh, the example to look like. I'm trying it myself and then I'll take a look and see what they did and compare and go from there. Okay, and then we have another model that consolidates all the data. Okay, so that's probably a process. Sales regions. Okay, and then after that, I'm assuming it gets stored somewhere. Okay, so that's part one. Now we'll go to question two. What happens after you assign territories to sales reps? Okay, so the assignments feed into your incentive compensation management system, which is currently in Excel. Okay, so we consolidate the data and so then it gets assigned. So that will probably be a process, but we don't know how that gets done but I'm assuming that's a manual process, right? Having to assign the data or assign the region. So we'll say assign region. Okay. And then So here it's in Excel, but we call it the incentive compensation management system. Okay, so okay. Cool. What do you use the ICM data for? Okay, so we use it to calculate the compensation for each sales rep. We export the information out of the ICM into a CSV file. Okay, so these are each of the steps that are happening next. So first we use it to calculate the compensation for each sales rep. Okay, so next is, we'll say, calculate compensation for each sales rep. And we're gonna make a little legend here as well. Here and say, Need more info, manual or automated. So anything red is where I basically need clarity. 
purple. We'll make it orange because red might be like the broken area or something. I don't know. We'll make it orange. And then I'm going to leave notes for myself as well. So we'll say, is it done yet or would it over happen? Cool. Same for here. I'm not sure if that is an automatic process or not. We need to really confirm this whole thing. Okay, if I calculate the compensation, then we export the information. Okay, so then that's a manual process. So let's say export compensation. And create a sales letter for the reps. Okay, so export it. And then the next step is create a sales letter for reps. I like one shape per step. And I'm also going to make sure that these are spaced as evenly as I can get them. This is me just being a little OCD. Okay, we have a custom macro that we created in MS Word to run those letters. Okay, so how does that happen though? Okay, so this happens through a custom macro. Oops. So that might not be automated, but we'll need clarity around that. A macro and word runs to create these letters. All right. We also feed the ICN data to our finance team for the company profit and loss. Okay, so, but how, how, how? <laughs> And ICM data to finance team for PL statements. Alrighty. And I feel like that happens concurrently as well. So we're gonna put them here actually. Oh. Next. What type of systems does the finance team use? I don't really know. I just know it's a very time consuming and manual process to get all the company financials produced each month. Okay, so finance team produces a PNL. So that is manual. And then we're gonna make note that we need, we need to understand. So they produce the PL and then they use that to create finance, creates cash flow statement, and then finance team creates balance sheet. Where did they go? Where do they go? Okay, so we have that. Do any other departments provide you with information that feeds into your T&Q process? The strategic plan would be the main thing that we use as an input. This gives us overall sales targets and impacts how we allocate territories. We get an Excel sheet with those targets and then put them into our T&Q model. Okie dokie. Move that. Oh, 
Okay, so we need strategic plan. Is that a database though? Let's see, what is that for just like info? Yes, it's a document. Sales targets from a strategic plan. We're going to put that in the right. Okay, so I am actually missing a step here because this we don't have an uh, icon for the actual T and Q model. Okay, so this will be our T and Q model. There we go. And then this information goes into the T and Q model. Okay. You also go here. Okay, cool. How does project? Well, how does projected growth in the business get incorporated into territory assignments? Okay, so as we plan for the business to grow, how does that impact how territories are assigned? It's incorporated indirectly. Our projections for share of wallet or SOW. And total available market are calculated using a proprietary system that we've had for years. Okay, so there's another system now. <laughs> so there's a proprietary system that feeds into the strategic plan. Okay, so basically share of wallet and total available market. Okay got you, which then feed into the strategic plan. Okay, okay, okay. So again, I'm gonna break these out. So I think it said share wallet. Yep. And then total available market. I'm going to move these back even more because after we export them, then we need to import them into the strategic sales plan. So, right, so import SOW and PAM into plan. Okay. So then we need to also then import sales targets. All right, step by step. I wonder if I even need to be this detailed with it, but we'll see. I don't know, maybe I'm doing it all completely wrong, but. It's fun. Okay, I'm just straightening up some lines here. I'm crazy. The lines are crooked. Oh no. Come on. There's got to be a way to. Clean them up. Oh. I had a. Oh, I got it. Okay. Come on. Oh. Oh. 
sounds a little off, but for the sake of moving on, I will move on. All right, and then these two. Okay, awesome. We're going to use the overall sales projections from the strategic plan in our territory allocations. Okay, wait a minute. Then we'll use the overall sales projections from the strategic plan. Okay, so we need to then export. In our territory allocations. Okay. Are there any other areas where you think and a plan could be helpful to the company other than T and Q? Everywhere, but if I had to say where I'd like to see implemented next, I'd say the incentive compensation model process. Okay, so the ICM. Where did we store that? Okay, so we'll just make a note of that actually. I feel like incentive compensation model. Didn't we have that somewhere though? This is wrong. So there should, that's, that's a process and this should actually be the ICM. That's what's missing, okay. Blech. Okay, so we'll say ICM. What was that stand for? Incentive compensation model. Okay. Okay. And then this is actually a process. Something's being done here, right? It feeds into it, and this stores it and then this is a process because it calculates it cool okay opportunity for Okay, cool. How does HR department factor into your territory allocation process? They don't, it's separate. Of course, new sales reps have to deal with human resources when they get hired, but only applies to existing. Okay. So I think a note. But HR model needs to connect to T and Q and ICM models. They need to know they need to know uh, what employees to allocate to when using Anna Plan. Okay. All right, so let's take a look and see. Compare your version of the process map to the one we created as a result of this interview. It doesn't need to be in the same format, but it should reflect the same flow. Make sure that you captured notes about the systems and data, not just the process steps. Did you miss anything upstream or downstream of the TNQ allocation? 
If you did miss something, go back to the previous page and review the interview questions again. Revise your process map before moving on. Okay, so mine is way more detailed. <laughs> well, let's compare. <laughs> That's a good thing, I feel like. Okay, so we're going to compare my process map to theirs. So they do have the, state, the share of wallet and the TAM right here, which I have just separated out, which then export into the strategic plan. Okay, so what I'm missing here is internal storage for uh, the strategic plan. So I'll map that out a little bit more. Uh, internal storage. Okay, so we'll say so. Mock right. Okay, so we'll say this is the strategic plan. Cool. And then here we'll say pool. And then this will come into here. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um. So then we have our T and Q model here, cool, which then feeds into the ICM eventually, which we have here. So for the actual ANA plan, I'm gonna make, we'll just call this like an ANA plan model. Okay, and then I'm gonna change the color of that to like a blue. So that I can see what we're doing. Okay. These are all the potentials for models in the Anna Plan build. So that's cool. This is a little bit. That line is straight. So we're going to just move you on over so you can. There you go. All right. All right. So now I can see my potential models that will be in the build. Okay. Then, so we have our T and Q, and then the ICM throws out a PL, cash flow statement, balance sheet. And then we have sales letters. Okay, so then we need our like our deliverables. I guess we'll call them. Okay, so we, we need to have a sales letter that's important for them cash flow and balance sheet. So these are like reports that they want to be able to have basically. Okay, cool. In this activity, we focused on the systems and data that move between parts of the end to end process. In a real life setting, you also want to gather information about other relevant dimensions as well, such as the different roles or personas that carry out the various activities and the timing associated with a step in the process. How often does an activity occur? How long does it take? Okay, hold Compare on. Compare your version of the process. So now I want to share this in my Twitter thread. So I'm going to file export as PNG. We'll crop the content. Actually, I need to put my name on this as well.
So we're going to file, export, PNG, crop to content, download. Okay, so. Okay, so. I, my process. Here also we're going to have, I need like a box or something for like the legend. Legend, and we'll make it middle. Come here. I'll put it at the, at the bottom. Align it up nice. Okay, so now we're gonna file, export. Let me get a JPEG. Screen quality, print quality. Okay, find, download. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then where is, oh, it's over here, I believe. Okay, so here's mine that I'm uploading. And then recent screenshots. All right, so moving along. In this activity, we focused on the systems that. and data that move. And now we're looking at our next steps. Oh, why does it always talk? Okay. How often does an activity occur? How long does it take? Combine all this info to complete, to develop a cohesive picture of the intent process that animals them up. Feel free to use the menu on the left to revise any topic. Oh, okay. Well, I think I made mine detailed enough. So I'm gonna move along. Okay, cool. So this was the, this is what I ended up with as far as my process map. And I'm happy with that. Yeah. Quite happy with that. I think I'll call it here. <laughs>